Thanks everyone for uh, coming to our party this afternoon. Uh, earlier this afternoon, my colleagues and I filed a memo with the Office of the City Clerk. The memo was directed to City Manager Eric Walsh, requesting a City Council meeting to discuss our concerns with the suitability of City Attorney Andy Segovia. We didn't come to this decision lightly. We understand the seriousness of our request. My concern is that the City Attorney is not sufficiently fulfilling our expectation for the role that he holds and it has repercussions on our community. There have been compounding instances where he's given me consistent legal advice, inconsistent legal advice, and most recently, he failed to call an executive committee meeting to discuss the firefighter contract negotiations. This after repeated requests for me and several other council members to do so. After yesterday's B session, where we discussed the city's trial budget, which included a significant gap because of the ongoing neg negotiations, I and several other council members asked for an executive set session so the entire council could be briefed and provide guidance. Andy's own legal advice to us was that these discussions should be in executive session, but then he refused our request. So my colleagues behind me and I filed a five signature memo formally requesting said executive session. Andy again refused. Before yesterday's refusals, there have been instances where he's been given different legal advice and, and different opinions to separate council members at different times. Our decision isn't because of one, one of refusal. It's because of an increasing list of inconsistencies. The refusal to call an executive committee meeting tipped the scale. I want to emphasize this fact. It is not personal. This is about confidence, reliability, and transparency. As a member of the city council, it's more challenging to do the work I was elected to do if I don't have confidence in our city attorney. My commitment to my community is to get things done, to push things to make things better, and I can't do that if I don't, can't rely on key people like our city attorney. This boils down to confidence and reliability. San Antonio can't move forward without these. I'll call on our my colleague, Councilwoman Marina Alderete Garrido, to add her remarks. Thank you. Good afternoon. I signed on to this because I believe we deserve a full discussion in support of our first responders. Our residents' top priority is public safety, and I've represented that priority since day one. This discussion is needed to ensure effectiveness and guarantee we are taking care of those who take care of us. When our residents call 911, there needs to be an expectation that the best public safety officers in the country will respond. Investing in public safety is one of the core functions of our city, and there's nothing more essential than investing in our police and fire. All we have asked for is the opportunity to discuss this as a full city council. I'm gonna now turn it over to my colleague, Councilwoman Terry Castillo. Today, I stand with four of my colleagues in requesting a meeting to address the role of the city of San Antonio's city attorney, Andy Segovia. This is our second request in the last two days for such a meeting. As duly elected representatives, this disregard for our input is unacceptable. We expect the city attorney to align their legal strategy and direction with the majority of council. However, it has become evident that our current city attorney is not inclined to support the request of the city council members who signed on to a three signature memo with five signatures asking for an executive conversation for us to discuss fire negotiations. Yesterday evening, a five signature memo was submitted to the city clerk's office calling for an executive committee meeting regarding negotiations with the San Antonio Professional Firefighters Association. Rather than following this request, the city attorney uh, intervened and attempted to block us from having that conversation. We followed the city charter by ensuring that we submitted that three signature memo, which states and is clear, special meetings of the council shall be called by the city clerk upon request of three members of the council. If we allow the city attorney to block this request, then we're violating our city charter and denying our residents their voice with our city budget. I'm disappointed in the leadership and that this was not distributed. I'm disappointed that we weren't taken into executive session despite numerous requests from city council members to have this conversation. Each of us are expected by our constituents and city of San Antonio residents to make data-driven decisions. And we can't make data-driven decisions 
on this negotiation if we're not being presented full data and numbers for us to evaluate and ensure that we're giving the best recommendation and making the best decision possible. So I am advocating that we continue uh, to call for a meeting and have this special session to one, discuss the negotiations to ensure that we have access to all the data and numbers necessary to make the best decision. And then of course to discuss in the metrics in which our city attorney determines whether or not we can have an executive session meeting. Thank you. I'll now hand it off to Councilman uh, McKee Rodriguez. Thank you, and thank you all so much for being here. Um, right now in my heart, I feel uh, a lot of sadness. Um, as members of the San Antonio City Council, we have a duty, an obligation, and a public expectation that we are making sound decisions on behalf of our community rooted in equity and compassion for the betterment of our city. For us, this means we're tackling major policy issues and decisions affecting our residents, including infrastructure, housing, transportation, and among many others, safety. In order to weigh the issues and matters before us, we rely on sound legal opinion and guidance from our city attorney and his team. And we have to trust that the information that we receive is true and whole. What prompted this memo is a consensus amongst many of us that there is a lack of trust in the city attorney to provide us guidance and feedback that is not tainted, and that we are being given inaccurate, untimely, or otherwise incomplete information. My colleagues know I hate executive sessions. I don't need a private discussion on anything. That's never been my prerogative. But the nature of our job is that we have to have sensitive discussions related to personnel, litigation, and other legal matters that public discussions would inherently harm. I understand that. And when the city attorney tells us that we cannot have a discussion in public and it has to be an executive session and we request one, that is hampering our, that's, inhibit, that's inhibiting us. And what we are instead receiving is conflicting information about what we can and cannot say publicly, but are not being given the opportunity to express it in either a public or a private setting. At the root, we are elected to give direction and guidance on major policy discussions and we are being silenced. That silencing is at the direction of our city attorney and now is as good a time as any to have a discussion on his role and his suitability. This is something that none of us wanted to do. Andy is a good person and I like him, but this is about our ability to do our jobs without brick, wall, brick walls being built in our way. I hope that us filing this request gets us closer to resolving that issue. So now I'll turn it over to uh, Councilman White. Thank you. Make no mistake about it. Today is a sad, sad day for the city of San Antonio. Um, none of us want to be up here today. But the truth of the matter is we have a significant transparency problem here at City Hall. Eric Walsh is our city manager. Ron Nuremberg is our mayor. But they are only two people that are involved in this city government. There are 10 other elected representatives that represent more than a million people here in our area. And the only way that we can get information out to our constituents in a timely and transparent manner is if we get that from city staff and from the mayor. And unfortunately, what I've realized over the last year is that the city attorney's office has worked with city staff and with the mayor on too many occasions to block that transparency. And when that occurs, we can't give the information to the people that put us here in office. And that's where there's a problem. This has been going on for some time, but it reached a breaking point this week because this week we were talking about our brave firefighters, the folks that go into burning buildings, the folks that are here to protect all of the citizens of San Antonio. And when we request a simple meeting, when we follow the rules, when we follow what the city charter says, to do what we have to do to call a special meeting, and it is denied, well, that's when we had to take action. Late yesterday, the mayor put out a statement regarding his belief that all of these discussions should be held in public. That is laughable because we were told just weeks ago by the city attorney that all of these conversations had to be held in private. Yet now, three weeks later, 
the city attorney is reversing course. This cannot be tolerated. The citizens of San Antonio deserve more. And it's for those reasons that today the five of us filed that memorandum asking for a special meeting so that we can discuss the future of the city attorney position here in our city. We do not take this action lightly. It's something that's gonna be carefully considered over the next week by not only the five of us, but by the rest of council. And we hope for a better outcome next week when we can again get together and together do what is best for the city of San Antonio, because that's what we're all here to do. Thank you. Well, this is different today because we, again, played by the rules. We were told not to talk about fire negotiations in public, that it would compromise the city's bargaining position, right? By the city attorney? By the city attorney. And so then, then when we asked for a meeting behind closed doors, we were told it wasn't gonna happen. So we have a flip-flopping of legal advice from the city attorney. And, and, and we can't have that. This is an important negotiation. We need to make sure that our firefighters are paid as the best fire department in the country because that's what they are. And the actions of the city attorney are compromising um, our ability to do that. I know you said within the last 48 hours as well, but the Texas Open Meetings Act actually requires 72 hours notice. Well, well, our request was for a meeting next week. May 17th, uh, 15th or 17th, before, um, before May 17th, that's right. I, I just want to clarify on this first point, the, the fire negotiation contracts are very different from any negotiations that are happening with the Spurs, which I, I don't think anybody here has been involved in, partly because fire is a city department. It's our duty to give direction to the city manager and the negotiation team of the city to negotiate with the fire department. That's not our purview over an outside entity. Council, you mentioned there were some accounting instances. Yes. Sure, I'll give you the example I've been talking about. Uh, last year, several of us asked for um, animal care services to be able to spay and neuter uh, an animal that was uh, detained, um, that was picked up on the streets and detained. Uh, several of us asked over and over, and we were told by our city manager that that was not possible. It was against against state law. We city have that. Um, I'm sorry. What did I say? Sorry, the city attorney. I'm sorry, the city attorney. We were told by the city attorney. Um, that we couldn't do that, it's against state law. We pushed and pushed and were made to understand that the state of Texas sees animals as property, chattel, and we can't, uh, we couldn't um, spare or neuter them. Um, thankfully, Councilwoman Aldana Tegavito was able to get a CCR passed and get that situation resolved, but she got conflicting legal advice that, that I got last year from Andy Segovia, um, now saying that yes, in fact, we can spare and neuter these animals once they've been detained, even if they are owned by San Antonians. That's, a, I think this is gonna be a game changer for animal care services and for our city, and I'm thankful again that Councilwoman uh, Altenete Rita was able to get that through, but that's one example of how we got conflicting legal advice. This could have happened a year ago, and it could have been um, very, very different for our community. I can add to that. Other examples? I can add to that. Um, I'll add to that the issue of site and release. For, I'll add to that the issue of site and release. This is an issue that uh, we saw come before voters as a part of a, a massive proposition. Prior to that, there were many efforts to have discussions about site and release and what uh, and the methods that we could use to have that conversation, what we could do. The methods that we could do or what our options were, were con consistently conflicting and changing. The goalpost was moved quite consistently. So there's three major examples. And I'll tell you, our city attorney is there to call balls and strikes, right? And to give us legal advice. And far too often, Andy has tried to, to weigh into the policy side of discussions again in, in, what? No, in, in an effort to, uh, to sort of stifle the other, the other council members in, in, in what we're pushing for. And I'll tell you, this goes also to ad how we agendize items, right? Every council A session, there's 25 or 30 items on there. And too often, too often, they are too general in the way things are agendized. And it's my opinion that the reason for that is there's a hope 
that we won't see a lot of things that, are, that they're trying to get through, that they haven't talked to us about. This has got to stop. And again, we're hopeful that this is going to be the step today that brings change here with respect to how the city attorney interacts with the rest of city council. Yeah, we're down for an open meeting. Uh, we've said that pretty consistently, and we're down for any meeting. We just are owed the opportunity to discuss and to reflect the, the voices of our constituencies. I think a, a few of my colleagues have to leave, uh, and myself in a few minutes. What we'll do is we'll set everybody up who can be here uh, for individual interviews with y'all. Real quick, though, clarification of the memo. You talked about possible consideration of a new city attorney. Is it what it sounds like? I'm not going to speak for my colleagues. I'm going to say yes. I, I'm, I'm looking for that. I'm looking for a replacement. I think it's time for a change. I've been on council five years. It's time. And I'll tell you, we're airing a little bit of dirty laundry here, but it's gotten to that point. We have, we have tried to work internally um, several times, me over the last my last three terms, and I've gotten to the point where the answer for me is yes, but I'm not going to speak for my remaining colleagues. Um, I, I'll I offer them the uh, mic on that, and then we're going to cut it. We'll, we'll have individual interviews, please. What I would add in regards to that, uh, my goal is to have an understanding for the mechanisms in which the city attorney determines that we cannot and will not have an executive session. Uh, again, right, what we saw yesterday were council members requesting for an executive session to have a deeper conversation on the metrics and numbers regarding uh, the, the San Antonio Firefighters Association's contract uh, and an opportunity to look at those metrics to, to have an understanding of the data. And despite several council members asking for an executive session, uh, leadership, right, that could be the mayor as well, uh, failed to take us to an executive session to have this conversation. So I would like to have an understanding of the mechanisms in place, the rubric, the metrics that the city attorney uses to determine that we are not going to have an executive session because he has determined that we should not. Thank you. I would like to have a conversation about the mechanisms in which he uses to make the determination that he is not going to call for an executive session despite city council members calling for one. Thank you. Yeah. And I'll say that the goal of this discussion for me is an end to the, the sort of conflict that we're talking about, the, the problems that we laid out uh, minutes ago. I want those problems to end. If they can end under the existing city attorney, then that works with me. If, that, if it's not going to be resolved, then we're going to have to go another route. So that's my, that would be my direction. I think, yep. All right. Say anything? Look, I had a conversation with Andy last night about why he wasn't going to call the, uh, the executive session meeting. Uh, his answers weren't satisfactory for me, and that's why we move forward today. I plan to have a conversation with Andy over the next couple of days. Um, uh, to again get his take on some of these transparency issues. Uh, if the answers aren't satisfactory, uh, then without question, uh, we need to move forward and find a new city man, uh, city attorney. Thank you very much. We'll be available for uh, individual interviews. Thank you. Thanks.